This is our audience tonight. They don't know we're watching them, but there are surprises in store for ex-boxer George Raymond, although it's a bit below the belt. Jessica Tate, the mongrel who wants to meet pedigree stars. And this man who last saw his brother when they were schoolboys running from an invasion. For these people and more, it's surprise, surprise! Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Scylla Black. the surprise surprise and have we got some surprises lined up for you tonight why don't we get cracking straight away I'll tell you about this a couple of weeks ago on the search line we had an appeal from a Douglas Stroud who was trying to find his brothers and sisters he hadn't seen since he was a little baby well surprise surprise Scylla's search line did it again and Douglas's sister Phyllis saw it and she contacted us and she wanted to meet her brother Douglas for the first time, but she wanted to do it in a little bit of privacy. Well, we understand that, so earlier today, we arranged a reunion. Now, Douglas hadn't seen his little sister Phyllis since he was six months old. Oh, didn't they look well, ladies and gentlemen? Yes. And I'm so pleased that they've come here to the studio tonight to share the show with us. Where are you, Phyllis and Douglas? meet Jessica Tate. Now last week I made a surprise phone call to Jessica who wrote in and said she wanted to be famous. Now if you remember that phone call you must remember Jessica. Jessica is a mongrel dog. <laughs> well they say every dog should have its day so today it's Jessica's turn. So here with her owner Sue Halai is of course the one, the only Jessica Tate, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, look at that. Jessica. Missy. Hello, Jessie. Jessica. <laughs> oh, isn't she gorgeous? Oh, Sue. Thank you very much for bringing Jessica on the show. Well, you're welcome. She's very happy, you can tell her. Little <laughs> tail's wagging there. <laughs> She's beautiful, our Jessica here. But what a lovely name you've called her, Jessica Tate. Now, that's a very famous name, isn't it, Sue? Well, yes. She was very scatty as a puppy, and we got her from the soap program, Jessica Tate. Yeah, one of my favourite programmes. Now, she writes a lot of letters. There's a lot of poor writing, your Jessica Tate, doesn't she? Well, yes. Who's she written to? Well... Other than yourself, yeah. she has written to Father Christmas. <laughs> ah, Father. Did she get a reply? No, and she was so upset. So naughty, we... naughty Father Christmas. <laughs> so, she was taken to see him. You took her to see Father Christmas? Yes. Jessie, Jessie, what did Father Christmas say to you, Jessie? Did no! You... <laughs> yeah. did. Good on you, old Jessie. Well, Father Christmas, you went to see Father Christmas. What yes. did you do? Well, he, he was a bit surprised, you see, but he took her on his lap. So she told him what she wanted for Christmas, and she got her squeaky mouse. Oh, isn't that nice? So, Who else has she written to? Well, she had to write a letter of complaint. 
she found a foreign body in her dog biscuits. <laughs> what sort of foreign body did you find, Jessica? Well, it was a lump of metal. And yes. what happened when she wrote this um, letter well, of complaint? Well, she wrote a letter of complaint telling them, you know, that she could have choked to death while eating her dinner. And they sent her eight pounds in money. Eight pounds yes. in compensation? That's right. <laughs> Jessie? Jessica? Jessie? Yes, all right. Well, what did you do with it, Jessica? Tell them. That's it. You went on holiday, didn't you? Yes. That's right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, I know this sounds... But I'm only used to talking to plants. <laughs> and Jessie's a bit different. So she went on holiday. <laughs> With your eight pounds, yes, yes. <laughs> Jessie, love. Jessie. No, I'm not a lamppost, Jessie. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. <laughs> Jessie. <laughs> yes? Well, I'll tell you what's coming next. You are going to love this next bit. <laughs> you are, Jessie. You are. Oh, she's gorgeous. Holidays, eight pounds, compensation. <laughs> See, we had a letter from Christina Buller, who told us that her father-in-law, Tony, is a football fanatic. And he always hoped one of his six sons, six sons, would one day be a professional footballer, but none of them ever quite made the grade. So we sent our Bob Cowlgees to Ipswich Town Football Club to make a special surprise for Tony. Tony Bullock, how are you? Surprise, surprise. Oh, Come here, Tony. Oh, no, I wondered. <laughs> you wondered? Well, yes, let me I've tell you, wondered. we've been waiting for ages for you, but I'm here to do a very special football transfer, and uh, I'm going to sign somebody up, and you're the person I'm signing up, actually, Tony, because your daughter-in-law, right, has uh, told us that your ambition in life is to actually have uh, one of your, a member of your family being a, a very good footballer, is that right? Yes, that's well, correct. Have you got any sons at all? <laughs> yes, I've got six of them. Six sons, and, and six not sons. one of them is a, is a good footballer? Not one of them. Really? No. Well, this is your big match day. Yes. So you're, this is it, because we've got a top-line team lined up for you waiting here. Uh, can we have Tony's team in, please? <laughs> oh, my God, Father. <laughs> <laughs> These are your, your six sons and a son-in-law, and uh, they're all changed ready, because you are now the manager of their team. So if you go off and get ready, give them a nice team you, talk, you and we'll see you very shortly. Now, this yeah. isn't bad, is it? We've got a top stadium for you. We've got a top team for you. It's a shame the crowd's a bit low, but uh, yeah. cheerleaders. You could do some cheerleaders. Have we got any cheerleaders? <laughs> Cheerleaders, my daughter in law's and my daughter. Your daughter in law's and yours? Well, fancy that. Yeah. Don't they look marvellous? But I yeah. suppose you're wondering now about your opposition. Yeah, I am. Well, I we've am. got a fantastic team. I'll just get them. Hello, <laughs> 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 <And no> boys. <laughs> Oh my God. What a team, They've also got their own manager, this team. And uh, you're probably wondering who that is. No, it's Mr. Tommy Doherty. Oh, God. <laughs> Come here if you want, Tommy. This is Tommy. Meet Tommy. Tony. Oh, yeah. All right, thanks. Tom. Now, Tommy, right. tell me, you're, uh, you're known throughout football as the dog. <laughs> dog? Oh, sorry, the dog. Yes, well, the dog. <laughs> A bit rough. Yeah. What do you think of your team, uh, Tommy? Oh, tremendous. Especially yeah. going forward and very agile. Each player's got four good feet. Really? Well, it's about time you managers took your positions on the benches, so uh, off you go and we'll start the game. <laughs> so, referee Carol G starts this dogfight between the Rovers and the Bullocks. The Rovers very keen to get underway and they're starting like terriers. It really looks as though they could win a lot this season. <laughs> Terrific attack building up there. Plenty of support here for the Bullocks too. And the Rovers aren't alone either. They really are hungry on, for the Daddy, ball. What a biting on, encounter this is. And the Rovers looking very useful in the air. Snapping away. If 
like the Doc might have been warming up his substitute there. He might need him there in trouble. The Bullocks have scored. The goal coming at just the right psychological moment. Let's catch up with the Doc's half-time tour. And now let's go out of here in the second half and do the business. Let's look up, stop running about your noises in the ground, look about you, a little bit of vision. Play the best and we'll be doing all season. This is the worst we've played all season. So then the Bullets one up, off we go in the second half. They're really hounding their men here. And looks as though Tommy's using that substitute. Shrewd tactics. I wonder who's going to come off. One or two looking dog tired out there. Oh no, it's Walkies. <laughs> Well, the Rovers licking themselves into shape, going like greyhounds, and it's there, one all. Well then, worrying times these for Tony, everything to play for. The Rovers nipping in, looking for the lead. Tony's stripping for action. Well, let's see what the crowd think of it. Looks like there might be a bit of puppy fat there. But Tony straight into the action. And going close with his very first shot, looks like a player of some pedigree. <laughs> That's a penalty against the dogs. Oh, they're behaving like animals now. Keeper shouldn't really move. Oh, that's bone oh, there. Glory for the Bullocks. The Rovers go home with their tails between their legs. Well, let me honest, it's been a very good match. The final score was, of course, 2-1 in favour of... Uh, of the Bullocks. Oh, I think a shake of the hands is uh, between the managers yes. is, is Thank over. Thank you very much. Yeah, very well and, and Tony, for winning, we'd like to present you with the surprise, surprise trophy oh. for the uh, best, best Bullock team in the business. Well done. Oh, yeah. Thank you. marvellous piece of film and I must say a very big thank you to Tommy Doherty being the manager there and also for Jim Rosenthal for doing the voiceovers. Did you like it Jesse? Jesse! Tell him Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> I know she fancied the one in the number three shirt actually. <laughs> she did. What a super thing. Well you come on this show. Get up here Jess. Yes. That's a good girl. Let them see your bonny face. Now, you came on this show, didn't you, to meet superstars? And have we got some superstars for you? Two superstars from the underworld. They were hand-picked before the show. <laughs> and here they are, Jessica. Before your very eyes, we've got Fido and Rover. Come in, Fido and Rover. <laughs> Can you see, Fido? Could you? Would you like to walk this way? Could you? See it. That's it. That's it. And your rover. Oh, you, oh. This is Fido. <laughs> you, Fido. Could you take your head off and just show that they are, you yeah. see? Jesse, this is George. This is George, George Raymond. Raymond. Yes. And we picked him out of the audience just before the show to come on. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't like you. <laughs> Doesn't like you, Rover, at all. But this is, you see, George Raymond. And I know an awful lot about George Raymond, Jessica. Do. <laughs> yes, I do, because, you see, I was written a letter telling me all about you. You're joking. I'm not joking. You used to be an amateur boxer. That's right, yeah. Yes. 
And you were actually very good in your day. Was I? <laughs> yes, you were. In fact, that um, you were disqualified once from a very big, important fight, amateur fight, with Henry Cooper. That's right, yeah. That's you right. hit him below the belt. Did I really? Yeah, but... <laughs> well, that's what you were disqualified <laughs> for. No, no. Oh, yes, you were. <laughs> and Henry Cooper has been wanting to get his own back all these years. Has he really? Yeah. And he's in our audience tonight. He is? Fine, where? Well, here he is, ladies and gentlemen, Henry Cooper. I thought I was going to be stuck in there. What about Jessica? She didn't like you oh, at Jessie, all. Oh, Jessie, you didn't bark at me before, <laughs> did you? She's having a bit of a growl now. Oh, but Henry, what about that fight? All the... <laughs> yes, yes, I agree. Um, <laughs> many years ago, 1952, wasn't it? Uh, well, how come you let him, you know, how come you let him hit, hit you below the belt? I mean, what about the shorts? Didn't you have them high enough? I must have had them too high, I reckon, yeah. <laughs> Well, I fought a guy in the semi-final first, and he got disqualified against me. Then I pulled right. George in the final, and he got yeah, disqualified. Right, yeah. I've got a book here. I think I've got it in my that's my uh, my old uh, record book. So you yeah. kept all yeah. the records. I kept the record. Yeah, yeah. And that's you right. hit him below the belt. Cool. Our end. I still feel it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you knocked me out the ring, you know. Shut up, buddy. How would you flirt with Muhammad Ali? Because he actually knocked him no, down. Like Great guy, isn't he? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. One of the best. But That's Henry, right. I mean, you've been waiting to get your own back on this character for all these years, over 30 yeah. years. Yes? Over 30 years I've been waiting. Now, I've got a, a room down there. We're going to go down there. We're going to get out of this lot. Terrific. I'm going to roll my old sleeves up. <laughs> I'm going to lock that door and I'm going to splash you all over. <laughs> We should take our lovely little doggy for walkies. Come on, Jessica. Walkies! <laughs> Give him a couple of minutes. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, and welcome back to part two. Well, Sue, tell us. We're all dying to know. We're waiting here with bated breath. Do you think your Jessica is enjoying herself here on Surprise Surprise tonight? She's loving every minute of it. But I know she likes she likes watching superstars on television, doesn't she, and things? Yes. And who's her favourite idol on the telly, would you say? Well, she's madly in love with Tommy Gunn. That, that's the supreme champion of Crocs. That's it, yes. Of 1985 last year. That's well, she... surprise, surprise, Jessica. <laughs> oh, Jess! We're going to make your dreams oh, come no. true tonight. Jessica! You are going to meet oh, in no. the fur. <laughs> Your idol, no, don't get all excited. You're going to meet the supreme champion of 1985, here with her owner, is Marita Gibbs, and we have Tommy Gunn. Come in, Tommy. <laughs> to win Crooks of Nightmare. Oh, kissy, kissy. Oh, kissy, kissy, isn't that lovely? And I know, Marita, Marita, I know Jessica's desperate, as you can see. <laughs> is desperate for Tommy's autograph. Do you think he would sign her book? Because she's I got a... Imagine he would. She, yes, yeah, she's brought a special autograph book here. Oh, there it is. <laughs> yes, there it is. 
Yes, you don't mind signing that, do you, Lord? <laughs> Excuse me. And also, you know, we've got this little paddock. You wouldn't mind putting his paw on there, would you? So, um, Tommy, Tommy oh, Chuck. No, not me. He's beautiful. Yes, do you mind doing that? No, don't eat it, darling. <laughs> yes. Don't, uh, and Tommy, then, Tommy. Jessica, this is for you. Yes. Oh, look, look. He's signing his autograph. <laughs> Well. He's done it. He's, do he's dribbled and he's signed. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. yes. Say thank you, Tommy. Tell him you love him. <laughs> yes. And that's a special surprise, surprise for you, Tommy, because you know you've won lots of prizes, and so has our little angel dog here. Oh, Jessica's won prizes too, you know. Yeah, she's got three awards. What, what she won them in? She's got the Most Appealing Eyes Award. The Waggiest Tail and the Best Crossbreed. And the Waggiest Tail and the, bre the Best Crossbreed. Yeah. <laughs> well, that she certainly is. She's actually the best mongrel I've ever met. And as a special reward, we've got two extra rosettes to pin on you. And I think, oh, well, yeah, she deserves <laughs> Liverpool's colours. Come on, Jessica. Jessie, look. Jessica. There's look. your surprise, surprise rosette. Oh, Where shall I stick it? <laughs> Oh, there it is. Oh, and Tommy, Tommy, you are a star. Look there. Oh, look. <laughs> yes, congratulations. And, you know, you came on this show, Jessica, to meet the stars. But you're not only going to meet the stars, you're going to eat them as well. Yes. <laughs> what have I got here? For <laughs> you. <laughs> On surprise, surprise, and it's all thanks to Marita and Sue here, and of course, not forgetting Tommy Gunn and the star Jessica Tay. Thank you very much, ladies. <laughs> They never work with children or animals, but I'd work with those animals any time. Wouldn't you, ladies and gentlemen? Were they stupid? Yeah. Jessica and Tommy Gunn. But now it's time to trip the light fantastic. And we had a letter from a Mrs. Angela Sinden who told us that her neighbor, Paul Cox, is crazy about the conga. But nobody seems to do it these days. It's true, isn't it? Nobody congas anymore. Anyway, we decided that nobody should be congolous. So earlier today, we sent our Bob round to where Paul works to organize it. Well, I'm outside the factory in Burgess Hill where Paul works, so let's see if we can, see if we can find him. Come on. Oh, thanks very much. Direct, you see. <laughs> Must be in here. Let's have a look. Paul Cox. Paul Cox. Are you Paul Cox? Paul Cox, no. Who's Paul Cox? <laughs> Down the bottom. Oh, we've got further to go yet. Come on. Don't know what he looks like. <laughs> Paul, Cox. <laughs> Paul Cox. Anybody seen Paul Cox? Where's Paul? Paul! Paul Cox. Hello, surprise, surprise. Oh, I had trouble finding you in this factory. How are you doing? All right. No, not too bad. I've been informed that you're in need of a good conga. Conga? Is that right? That's right, Well, yeah. we've come to put that right from surprise, surprise. Yeah. And we've uh, come to give you a really good conga. Who set this up? <laughs> Why do set this up? We're here to do it. So, uh, are you ready? Are you going to lead or shall I? Uh, you can start it off and then I'll take over. You lead and I'll follow. Right, you ready? Just yeah, a minute. Copy music. Did 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 did
I wonder how many they finally ended up with. <laughs> oh, we go. I'll see you in a minute, Paul. Right. What Anthony doesn't know is that uh, hidden around the whole square here, we've got loads of his friends and relatives and neighbours, and uh, we'll see what happens when he meets them. Come here, Paul. <laughs> Let's do the conga. Here we go. <laughs> bring his conga gang back to the studio because we've got an extra surprise for Paul Cox. But in the meantime, we're going to waltz over to gorgeous Gordon <laughs> and find out who's looking for who this week. So it's over to you, Gigi. Rats. That's charming, that is, Gordon. No, not, not rats to you, rats and searchline. Oh, I see. As a matter of interest, what would happen if a rat ran right across the studio in front of your feet? <laughs> <laughs> what would you do? I would die of fright. I really would. Well, you'll be interested in this first item then. You won't believe it because what I'm searching for this week is a group of rat catchers, or if you prefer the posh titles, rodent exterminating operatives. Now the thing is, this group were all girls. Laura Clark, nicknamed the Lucky Trapper, would dearly love to meet up with her old friends. They were all women's land army girls and shared a marvellous time learning how to exterminate rats at the Rittle Institute of Agriculture in July 1943. It was a flipping mucky job, said Laura. I bet it was. But we had many a laugh on our rat-catching excursions as we travelled all over the countryside on the back of a lorry. Well, if any of you girls are watching, please give us a ring. I wonder what you'd call a group of lady rat-catchers. Ratatouille or three or four? <laughs> well, if you can do better, answers on a postcard, prize for the best one, subject to ratification, of course. Anyway, <laughs> from, a, from a group of land army girls to one girl in particular, Joan Cooper. Over 40 years ago, Joan befriended a nine-year-old boy, Brian Lavelle. She taught him to drive her tractor and often visited his family in Hamilton Road, Feltham, Middlesex. Well, Joan, that friendship really influenced Brian because, let me tell you, he grew up to be a tractor dealer and he would love to get in touch with you. Joan, please give us a ring so that you can take that trip down memory lane. Now, how I do a suave handover from a tractor to Scylla, I don't know. Perhaps if I just smile, that will attract her. <laughs> A little later. Way up the hair, the combers are
enjoyed yourself doing that conga, did you? Brilliant. And what did you think of when uh, Bob surprised you today? Certainly surprised me, all right. Yeah, it really shocked me. Yes, and all those lovely people who came to the studio. Wasn't that smashing? Fantastic. Well, we've got one more surprise for you, Paul. Actually, it's an absolutely smashing surprise because your wife, Christine, wrote me a very touching letter and she said that... Uh, she told me that your father had died when you were 13 years of age mm. and that's when you went to Ireland to live with your aunt and uncle and they looked after you. Now, they're still in Ireland, but you haven't seen them for over 20 years. But you're going to see them tonight, love. It's your aunt and uncle, Auntie Bridget and Uncle Peter. And here they are. Bridget, after Certainly all this time. Is. Oh, well, while you, t while you three get to know each other again, it's just the beginning for you. <laughs> yeah. But I'm afraid you've got to take a break here. We'll see you in a couple of minutes. Isn't that marvellous? <laughs> well, now it's Silligram time, and this week it's dedicated to a member of one of Britain's oldest traditions, the Milkman. Now, they're always there, aren't they? Every day, rain, hail or snow, your friendly milkman can be relied upon to give you that extra pinter. And Ray Osborne of Hampton Court is a milkman in a million. He's twice been voted milkman of the year. So early the other morning, I went to surprise Ray on his milk round. Sorry, I, I thought you were the milkman. You see, that's who I'm waiting for. I'm waiting for Ray Osborne, and he's been a milkman for over 40 years. And all his customers think he's wonderful. So I've come here today to deliver him a silligram. Oh, gosh, I think that's him now. I better go. Good morning, Ray. <laughs> Good morning. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. This is a surprise. I bet you're wondering why I'm here. Oh, I am, really. Well, I've come especially to see you, Ray. Because all your customers think you are absolutely marvellous. <laughs> and they thought you deserved a special silligram. Did they? Yes. And that's well, why... Well, surprise. Are you really surprised? I really am. Because you're, you're retired. Well, I always thought Eamon and Andrews were going to come out one day, but... <laughs> we better still... I better just... Oh, yeah. so you've made my day. It's horrible morning raining here. Is. It's not horrible anymore. Oh, isn't that <laughs> lovely? Do you know you've got some smashing customers? I know I have. Because they've... They're all, you know, they know that you're retiring shortly. Well, not yet. No, well, how a long? long time ago. Two years, yeah. Oh, two years? Yeah. Well, how old are you now, then? 63 next... No, March. Well, they've all written to mm. me and said they right. can't bear the thought, even though it's two years away, they can't bear the thought of you going, and they want me to sing you a silligram. Go on, do they? <laughs> Go on, then. <laughs> oh, <well>. <laughs> <laughs>
saw Ray, ladies and gentlemen, sitting in the audience there with his lovely wife. Oh, you did as well, Ray. You did. God bless you, love. <laughs> and now sitting over there, raring to go again, is our gorgeous Gordon with another search line. Oh. You know, you're not the only one with a friendly milkman. Really? I've got one too. Well, each to his own, that's what I <laughs> said. I mean in Searchline. Oh, I see. Honest. Well done. Uh, his name is George Roadknight, and he would like to contact the little lad, as he called him, Leslie Norman, who used to help him on his milk run 20 years ago. George said, he's the best and nicest lad who ever helped me. I've never forgotten him, and in my eyes, he deserved the best. Well, Leslie, if you used to live in Leander Road, Norbury, and remember George, the rattle of the bottles and no doubt many a frosty morning, then please give us a ring. Well, next, a heartfelt plea from Sharon Williams, aged 11, who's trying to find her grandma's school pals from the class of 1924. It's a long time ago, more than half a century, but if you went to Brimscombe School, Stroud, Gloucestershire, with Joyce Morgan, and recognise yourself in this photo, then do give us a ring. Well, just one quickie this week. We would like to contact someone who was born with the family name of Carey in County Kilkenny, Ireland, but now better known as Thomas Beckley. When Thomas was seven, he was evacuated to Abertillery, Gwent, and his last known address was Wenvo Avenue, Bexley Heath, Kent. Now, as usual, our researchers will be on 01 834 9090 until 10 o'clock tonight. But if you haven't got through by then, you can always write to us at Searchline, surprise, surprise, London Weekend Television, London, SE1, 9, LT. That's it for this week. Sit down. Oh, Gordon, I count the minutes until next week. <laughs> See you then, all Me right? Too. I shall be there. Oh, swalk. <laughs> <laughs> Seal with a loving kiss. I remember it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Gordon Burns. Well, it's time now. I made a surprise phone call. And this week, I'm going to surprise on the phone a Mrs. K. Head. Now, her daughter, Tracy, wrote me a lovely letter saying that her mother, Kay, boasts that she's got terrific legs. And that's why I'm going to phone her now, because I'm going to invite her on the show, because I think she should show her pins on the telly. Oh, and look who we've got here. We've got Garfield. Ah, yes. It's a good job all those dogs have gone, isn't it, Garfield? <laughs> isn't that sweet? And uh, phone number is... Oh, dear. It's got ten digits. Bear with us a minute. Uh, uh. <laughs> oh, it's a lot. Ten digits. Long phone number. And I wonder if Kate's in. And will she slap Tracy's wrists for sending that letter, I wonder? Hello? 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 Can I speak to Kay, please? Hang on a minute. Who's... Well, hang on, wait a minute. I'm on the phone. Oh. I think that might be Tracy, actually. Hello? Hello, Kay? Yeah? Kay, who, who answered the phone just then? Hello? Who answered the phone just then, love? Tracy. Oh, that was Tracy. Well, I must tell you, surprise, surprise, it's still here. You're joking. <laughs> no, I am not. And I suppose you're wondering why I called you, Kay. Oh, no. <laughs> what do you mean, oh, no, Kay? Oh, well... <laughs> Your Tracy wrote me a letter. She never. <laughs> yes, she did indeed. She wrote me a, a lovely letter about you, Kay. Yeah? Telling me all about your legs. Oh, my God. <laughs> and she said that you've got smashing legs for your age. <laughs> oh, I'll kill her. <laughs> no, don't kill her yet. Because you... How old are you, Kay? <coughs> Who's listening? <laughs> it's just me and a milkman out there, you know. I'm about as old as you, I think. Oh, no. 
Yes, that's a little bit of a compliment there. So I will you. <laughs> How many's listening? <laughs> tell me. You tell me first how old you are. Uh, well, um, about 38. I, oh, you're much older than me, Kay. I'm sorry. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> now I can give you a few years there, Kay. But your, your daughter says that you're always bragging that you've got better legs because you watch that lovely series about, about policemen called The Bill. Oh, the little f It's come up at the end, Kay. Oh, I know, I know. What do you say about that poor policewoman's legs? Oh, she's got horrible legs. They're really horrible and she walks at quarter past three. <laughs> <laughs> well, Kay, I mean, we want to see your pins on our show next week. Oh, no, I couldn't. I can't, I'd die. No, you wouldn't die. Oh, I you wouldn't die. I mean, your legs would be absolute. I mean, if you've got good legs for your age, as your Tracy says, we want to share those legs <laughs> with only just a few million viewers. Is that all right? Uh, oh, my God. And will you bring your Tracy with you on the show? Um, well, I'll have to ask my husband. <laughs> What's your husband's name? Dave. Well, is Dave there? Yeah. Well, put him on. I'll, I'll have a word with him. Oh, hang on a minute. Okay, Kay. Dave? Just just talk amongst yourselves for half an hour. Just going to have a word with Dave. I know I am. Did you hear that? But you're paying for the call, dear. Hello, darling. Oh, hello, Dave. Hello, darling. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Great. Now, maybe you'll tell me the truth about your wife's legs. What are they like? They're great. Are they? Yeah. I mean, if you were to compare them with any famous person. I mean, who, who, who would you compare them with? Uh, I don't really know. Uh, Nijinsky, I should think. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, Nijinsky is a super horse, thoroughbred, totally thoroughbred. Yes. And light on his feet, too. That's right. Well, Dave, I mean, I've got to ask your permission now because, you know, Kay was a bit, you know, worried about this whole thing. Yeah. I've invited her, I've invited her on the show next week with, your, you know, your daughter, Tracy. Yeah. And, of course, you yourself love. Great. You know, to show off her pins, her legs. That's right. Um, but she wanted your permission now. Has she got your permission? Yeah, why shouldn't she? That's what I say. Why shouldn't she show her legs on TV? <laughs> so I'll see you all on the show next week, all right? Yeah, great. Oh, thanks a lot, Dave. And give my love to Kay. Yeah, OK. And Tracy. Tra then. Yeah, tell her, darling. Tra love. Bye. <laughs> well, I'm looking now for somebody in our audience tonight. And yes, it's you, Mrs. Sylvia Nadasdi. Where are you, Sylvia? Yes. Come and join us, please. Come on, Sylvia. Come on, George. Would you like to sit, you like to sit there? Hello, George. How do you do? Please Hello, sit down next to your wife. <laughs> yes, you, he's left a poor mark That's on there. Right. Welcome to Surprise, Thank Surprise. You. Now, Sylvia, you wrote us a letter ages ago asking us to try and find a long-lost friend of yours. Is that right? Yes, yeah. Mm. Jeanette, well... Ginetta Dodd. Pardon? Ginetta Dodd. Ginetta Dodd. Mm. Well, that's what your husband thought anyway, didn't he? Yes, he yeah. did. Yes. Yes. But we're only interested in you, George. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Another George? <laughs> yes, we're interested in you because, um, well, I know all about you. Because oh, dear. I do. Oh, that's good. Because <laughs> Sylvia's written in and told me all about you. Because you tell everybody here where what, you come from. the good from. things or the bad things? <laughs> Only the good oh, things. That's right. Now, I know where you come from, but everybody at home, they don't know where you come from. Could you please tell them where you come from? I'm Hungarian. He's from Hungary. Hungary. And way back in uh, 1956, yeah. when the Russians invaded your country, yeah. 
You and your brother Peter had to get out of that country very quickly, didn't, yes, didn't you? Yes, yeah. Where did you go to? Austria. Austria? Yes. Whereabouts in Austria? Can't remember now. How old were you then, then? Fourteen. Fourteen. How old was your brother? Sixteen. Fourteen and sixteen. Yeah. Well, you went to a refugee camp in Austria. Yes, yeah. And while you were there, there was a lady who took you under her wing. Can you remember her name? She taught you your first English um, words. K? K, yeah. Kuzmani. Kuzmani, yeah, yes, yeah. Have I pronounced it right? Yes, yeah. K Kuzmani. Well, she taught you a lot. She taught you your first words in English. And not only that, while you were waiting for sponsorship to come over here to Great Britain, she also took you to Vienna to buy you some new clothes. Yes, yeah. And even new shoes. And you haven't seen in all those 30 years, have you? No. And I know from what your wife said that you've always liked, you would have liked to have seen it, just to thank her personally, haven't you? I would love to, yes. Well, you needn't wait no longer, because we found her, Kate Kuzmani. And I, it was a very big job, surprise, surprise. Where'd you find somebody who was last heard of 30 years ago in Vienna? We did. And she's here tonight, oh, George. Lovely. You can thank her yourself after all those years. Thank Come you. in, Kate. Say hello to George. Have a sit down there, John. Please sit down. Oh, yes, yeah, say hello to Sylvia there. Thank you. Have a sit down. Thank you. Well, what do you think of your pupil now after 30 years? He's grown a lot. What? Thank you. Tell me, what was life like in those, you know, those days in that refugee camp? It was a pretty grim time for the people living there, staying there. Uh, they came over the border, they had nothing at all, and families had been split up. And uh, people spend long, lonely days writing letters and filling in forms and hoping to be able to, to emigrate somewhere. Well, tell me, how did you manage to teach this boy, George, you know, English? Well, he was in one of the classes because there was a lot being done for the children because their education had all been disrupted. And uh, for the young people and for the grown-ups, there were English classes because uh, they had to have some sort of basis for, for emigrating. And most of them wanted to go to English-speaking countries. And that's how I first came across him. Isn't that lovely? But you, yes, but you and your brother, I mean, I believe when you, you escaped from yeah. Hungary, your brother was uh, wounded, wasn't he, trying to get away? Uh, well, I haven't seen him. I, I know when he came out, but I haven't seen him uh, since. Well, I, I know for a fact mm. that uh, you've tried to make contact with your yeah. brother. And indeed, your brother Peter try, has tried for a lot of years to make contact with you. He went to such lengths as getting in touch with the Red Cross and he found out that uh, you were living here in Britain. Yes, yeah. The only snag was that it, he was living 12,000 miles away. In Australia. In Australia. But George, he's, he's not there tonight. He We've, he's not. He is. <laughs> oh, no, he's not. He's got to be. No, he isn't. Oh. We've flown him all the way over from Melbourne just to be with yeah. you again. You haven't seen him in all those years, but you're going to see him tonight. Thank Here's you. your brother, Peter. Come in, Peter. George, sit next to your brother. You haven't seen him for such a long time. And isn't he a handsome lad? Almost as nice as me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I asked George about your wo you being wounded, but he, he didn't have any re recollection of that. I mean, you were wounded, though, weren't you, Peter? Yes, it's not many people know that. Just uh, one of the few people who closely knows me. Uh, it, wasn't very, it wasn't very serious, so, so I don't talk about what they heard it. And you were separated all those years ago? Yeah, years that's ago. a long time. So it's uh, about 32 years. 32 yeah. years. Well, now you've got tonight to get to know each other all over again. I Good. think it's been a smashing reunion. Well, thanks very much, Indy. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you. Matt loves it. happy ending can you and that really is 
the end of the show for another week. Thanks so much indeed. Oh, you're welcome, Joe. It's a never-ending game If nothing is impossible Will you believe your eyes? If the unexpected brings a smile That's a big surprise Surprise, surprise The unexpected hits you between the eyes The unpredictable That's the surprise you see Surprise, surprise well, ladies and gentlemen, the audience here, indeed everybody watching at home, we've come to the end of another surprise, surprise. We've all enjoyed ourselves. I'd like to say a very big thank you to everybody who's taken part in the show. Not forgetting, our Bob Carroll G's over there.